believe that before the universe there was nothing. They're wrong. There was darkness. And it has survived. Destroy us. Ask yourself. What will you sacrifice for what you believe? Welcome to Operation End Times. Excuse me. <laughs> Trying to get the audio all set up here, but uh, I'm your Jedi Warrior for Jesus, Bent Hellestead. And today is April 25th. It is a Thursday. It's a cloudy day out here in uh, San Jose, California. And you know, clouds, thunder, rain storms the storm god was Thor and uh, Thursday is Thor's day and uh, what you were looking at was the uh, trailer for the uh, movie Thor 2 that's coming out this fall I think it's in October which is surprising because it kind of coincides with the comet I Sun that's gonna be lighting up the skies this fall and, uh, you know, Thor was the son of Odin. And, uh, you know, all of it kind of ties into what's going on. Uh, you know, today's message is kind of uh, just an update of some information I wanted to pass on. But, you know... In these end times, you know, this is Operation End Times because, uh, you know, I do believe that God is preparing a lot of us for these end times to be uh, workers for the kingdom. Knights, you know, <laughs> shining knight. You know, my whole life I've, I've always viewed myself as a white knight, you know, a good guy that stands up for uh, those that uh, are defenseless, you know. But, uh, you know, the way the world's going right now, where the darkness just seems to be growing, uh, you know, the world needs white knights. The world needs heroes. And, of course, the ultimate hero is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But uh, that, that new Thor movie is called uh, The Darkness, you know? And, you know, you'll notice most of the movies coming out this year, you know, from Star Trek to whatever. You know, they all deal with some kind of invasion of darkness. But, uh, the good news is, we have the ultimate superhero, Jesus Christ, on our side. So, uh... You know, I may kind of be going around in a circle a little bit this morning, but I'm going to try and just kind of get through uh, everything. Um, yeah, Thor kind of plays a big part in what's going on. Uh, you know, my whole life, you know, if you couldn't tell, I I'm a Viking, and, uh, you know, I've always admired Thor. I collected comics as a kid, and I had just tons of Thor issues, so I've, 
I'm, you know, Thor's been like a hero of mine, and uh, I had a poster on my wall. I still have the poster. I don't have it hanging up anymore, but I've had it there for decades, you know, of Thor. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to circle back around to Thor. But I just wanted to share a couple things, you know, uh, as I do my walks in the morning, uh, you know, with my dogs along the creek, you know, I always pray and sing to God and, you know, sometimes he kind of drops stuff on me. So I'm just going to share a couple of things. Um, you know, he dropped the word ear on me, you know, that was like three or four days ago, five days ago. So I kind of did some research on the ear. And, uh, you know, a couple things popped up about it. Uh, an ear, you know, and a spade are kind of similar. And, you know, a spade, like from a deck of cards, you know, hearts, uh, diamonds, clubs, spades. A spade is considered the tree of life. Uh, a symbol of the tree of life. And the tree of life, of course, is Jesus Christ. Now, I will tell you, my friends, everything has both a positive and negative uh, connotation. You know, you can view things either in the light or in the darkness. And and most things are not good nor bad, but how we perceive them and, uh, you know, in, in what they do. You know, something good or something bad can come out of something. But uh, anyway... You know, God kind of dropped ear on me, and I was researching ear in the Bible, and, you know, an ear, you know, you always hear this this saying, and for end time saints, you know, this is something that is part of your growth and your walk in the light, on the path towards uh, paradise, uh, the path of being perfected, you know, we can never, you know, ever really be perfect, you know, but we can always be perfected, but uh, you always hear this uh, phrase in the Bible, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And I'll tell you, my friends, that is very important because your eyes, that's how everything comes into your brain. And the truth is, the minute you open up your eyes when you're born, darkness starts coming into your brain. And that's why Jesus, you know, he says when he heals the blind man and they said, was it his mother or father that sinned or was it him that sinned? And he said, hey, you know what? Nobody sinned here because his eyes have been closed. But now that they're open, he has the opportunity to you know, to be affected by sin, you know, the free will equation and choice. But, you know, that's the truth. And in today's society, just about everything you do, you know, TV, uh, you know, just real life, you know, there's a lot of stimulus coming in. You got to be careful what you're feeding your brain through your eyes. And you have to have a discernment. You have to have the ability to look away or to close your eyes, you know. Like, if you're always looking at porn, well, guess what? Porn leads you down a, a path, a shadow path, a dark path. And that's calling a spade a spade. You know, that it's a truth. That you can't sit there and stare at porn all day long and think that something positive is going to manifest itself from that. No, something negative is going to manifest itself. You're going to become fixated. It's going to become your idol, you know, because you're looking at it too much. And it's going to be, you know, impregnated on your mind, you know, imprinted to where it's, it's uh, you know, influence, you know, stopping you from thinking what you th should think. And, you know, the Bible clearly states, you know, that you should fill your mind with good thoughts. But the other half of the equation is for those who have eyes and for those who have ears. And the ear, one ear, it kind of symbolizes, uh, you know, if you look up the meaning of it in the Bible, I think it's the Hebrew word 24. It's right there at the beginning of the Bible. Uh, but ear means the ability to hear and to understand and to obey God's voice. You know, he who has an ear, you know. So part of our growth and path as far as uh, an end time saint and, and a member of the kingdom and someone walking around in love in the brotherhood is you have to have an ear and you have to stop flapping your lips for a minute and just listen to God and what he wants for your life, his will. Now, ears, because we have two ears, ears represents the ability to understand, to comprehend, to weigh, like in a scale, you know, to discern, to contemplate, and to see the truth. You know, he who has ears, that's what that means, is that, you know, they not only uh, can take in 
not only what God's saying, but hey, what other people are saying, but can then use his brain, his two ears, and weigh what he hears, and, you know, he doesn't fall for lies and deceptions. So, very important, in these end times, it's part of your arsenal. We talk, we talk about putting on the armor of God. Yeah, you should. But it's also having your toolbox. You know, your five senses are your tools. Your eyes, your nose, your, your mouth, your tongue, your ears, you know. So you need to make sure your toolbox, that you know how to use every weapon, every tool in your box. And of course, you know, the tongue is like the sword, you know, because the word of God is the living word that literally spills out of God's mouth, but it can come off of the tip of your tongue too. And you know what? I don't, I don't waste the viewer's time, but I will tell you this if I haven't said it before, but I always pray before each video where I say, God, let this video be to your glory and let it be your words that flow off of my tongue, not my words. You know, but I don't want to bore everybody and waste your time watching me make that prayer. But I'll let you know that I do do it, you know. And in a weird way, there's nothing wrong with praying on video. But I don't think in general that if you're making videos that, that you really want to pray, you know, to God at the beginning of the video. Because uh, in a weird way, you're kind of locking in the viewer to accept that what you're saying is the Word of God. Whereas, hey, even my viewers, what you're hearing for, off of my lips, you should process through your ears, contemplate, weigh in the balance. And if it rings true, then you know it is the Word of God. But just because I'm speaking it, you shouldn't take it for granted. But I will tell you that I do pray to God for him to let his knowledge and words flow on through. But you know what? If you do pray before your video, hey, God bless you, man. But me personally, I, I don't, you know, I, there's something weird about that. But, but, you know, I could pray, you know, like I could make a prayer in a video. But just praying for the video at the beginning of the video, I don't know about that. But anyway, back to ears. You know, an ear is also like an ear of corn. And a corn... Corn stock represents, you know, if, you, if you're an ear, that means you're, you, you can stand tall and stand fast in the truth because your ears can comprehend and you can, you can decipher the truth from uh, a lie. So, uh, you know, if you are an ear of corn, that means you're a person that can stand in the truth. Now, all these words in the Hebrew Bible are like Hebrew words number 238, 239, and 241. And right in the middle there is 240, which is 240. The number 240 uh, in numerology is the tree of life. And the, the one place you find that is in Deuteronomy uh, 23, where uh, God is talking about coming into the camp of the, uh, the faithful on earth. And he says, hey, man, I'm going to give you a paddle or a spade that you put on the other end of your sword. So look at it. Your tongue is the sword. On the other end of your tongue is your ear. And he says, it'll be a spade for digging a hole that you can, after you poop, you can bury your poop. And then I, you'll be clean in my eyes. I don't want to look at all that dirt and filth. Now, it sounds kind of gross. Most people, you know, you can interpret everything in the Bible on several Levels. So if you're just interpreting it on the very basic level, the carnal level, it's like, oh yeah, God is telling you how to take a poop and to bury your poop when you're done. But on a spiritual level, what it's actually telling you is that as an end time saint, it's part of your toolbox, your weapons that God gives you. And uh, it involves your ears and your tongue, the sword. You know, the sword, the tip of the, the, the sword is known as the flesh because that's where it enters the flesh. You know, so when you speak, it's the words that are on the tip of your tongue that affect whoever it is that you're talking to. But anyway, uh, you know, your ears, the spade, is it's another gift, which is your ability to take in and weigh information and not let it drag you down a shadow path, uh, uh, you know, into the darkness because you have the ability to discern, to contemplate. And what you can do is, even though people are telling you stuff that's untrue, like, ye are gods, because you're not gods. You know, only God is God. But, you know, that doesn't resonate in your brain. You know how to actually pray to God and say, hey, get all those thoughts that are not from you and of you out of my brain, out of my spirit, out of my body. You know, bind them up and cast them out and let them never bother me again. And that's the spade, digging the hole and burying the poop. 
So that's kind of what I got out of it, which is, you know, God was just confirming with me saying, hey, Ben, it's a gift I gave you, man, that you know how to bury your poop. And it, it fits right along with everything I've been doing in my Operation End Times because, you know, dogs are a reflection of life and love and picking up poop and servitude and humility and all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, I just kind of took it as a blessing uh, from God dropping the word ear on me. But right along with ear, he dropped the number uh, 153. And uh, 153 is another one of these amazing uh, numbers. You know, uh, 153 is the number of fish that the disciples caught when Jesus uh, appeared for the third time after he had been transfigured. And, and uh, you know, they caught 153 fish in their net. And then when they came up on the beach, Jesus said, do you have any meat? You know, for all those people that said Jesus doesn't eat meat. Oh, yeah, he does. He had actually not only eats it, but he had a fire going and was cooking some meat for the disciples. And, you know, of course, he was telling Peter, feed my, me, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. You know, what are you feeding them? Hey, you're feeding them wine and you're feeding them meat and manna, bread, meat, wine, a full meal, a feast. But it's all spiritual, my friends, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to just tell you, you know, God bless the vegetarians, you know, and I'm against cruelty, you know, and I know it exists out there. But, once again, you can't connect those dots of a person that puts a piece of meat in their mouth trying to make them feel responsible for all the cruelty along the uh, supply chain, you know, which is a chain of darkness, you know. But, 153 is known as a perfect plus number. It forms a perfect triangle. Uh, it's divisible by 1751. You know, 51 is that divine number. Uh... Elijah in the Bible in the Old Testament, he had uh, three sets of 51, you know, armies with captains come to get him. And the first two sets of 51 got destroyed by fire. And it was only the third set that repented and treated him a little more respectful that didn't get incinerated, you know. And all of that points to end time events. But 153 is a perfect plus number. It's also what they call a narcissistic number, which I was just like, what? And nar being a narcissist is the love of self. You know, it's actually an excessive love of self. But I tell you what, my friends, is a pure good form of love of self. And, you know, I had a website up that's down, but it was the four steps of co confrontation. But the first step is to confront yourself. But here's the truth is you can't love anybody unless you love yourself. And, you know, God loving you helps you love yourself. Believe me, I, I went through that, you know, where I learned to, to love myself exactly as who I am because I realized that God made me who I am and loves me for who I am. You know, so 153 is the love of self. And you know why? Because 153, what's weird about it is it's the sum of all the integers of 1 through 17. And there's something about no matter how you add up those numbers that keeps adding up to 153, man. And 153 is also known as a joy giver, you know, and that's what Jesus is. He's the ultimate joy giver, you know, the joy of salvation. You know, that was Psalm 51, you know, take not thy Holy Spirit from me, return the joy of thy salvation unto me, right? Now, 153, you know, in the Bible, there's 77 generations from Adam to Christ, and Christ being the 77th generation. So, actually, there's 76 generations from Adam to Christ. And in theory, there's 77 more after Christ. So, if you add 77 and 77, well, that's 154, but then you subtract the Christ generation, so that's 153. So, 153 marks like a completion of time and of an age. And my friends, if you do the math on that the 77 generations ends right now <laughs> so 153 is a marker you know the great pyramid has 153 layers of stones in it um, 153 blessings by jesus in the bible which included healing people raising the dead etc you know if you measure the flood in, in, in solar months, it was 153 days long, the deluge, the flood, that Noah's Ark was floating on the water. And I will tell you, my friends, you know, uh, Christ's ministry was six times 153. It was 918 days, which is like three years. But six represents change, six times 153. And you know what? Just do the research yourself. Look up the number 153. It's amazing. But it is the, the number of Michael, the archangel, as well. 
but God kind of dropped that number on me. So, uh, and, and you know, 153, it has something to do with music too, you know, like musical chords. And it's all about being in harmony and singing, you know, a new song unto the Lord. So I'm, I'm trying to do research, but I'm, I'm kind of musically retarded if you hadn't figured it out. So, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I would love it if I could figure out that chord progression and get it to where I could come up with some kind of spiffy tune. But anyway, my friends, it kind of all circles back to a couple of things. And, you know, I'm going to save uh, some people the uh, trouble, which is, uh, you know, I'm going to end with some signs in the stars. And, you know, I don't worship astrology. And, you know what, save your breath putting that stuff down on this channel because God puts those signs up there. But both sides, dark and light, look at stars and use them for signs. And, and you know, that's why there's a lot of darkness going on because they're looking at the stars like, hey, guess what? In the Muslim world, they got end time prophecies as well. You know, end time prophecies are everywhere. The Hopi Indians had them. Everybody has them. But they all look at the stars. And that's why everybody's advancing where they are and what they think they should be doing to be a part of the end time. And I'll tell you, my friends, you want to be in the light. And uh, God does not tell you to plant bombs at the Boston Marathon. So that was pure evil, my friends. But uh, anyway, uh, I'd gone through some of these dates. Uh, you know, I've got my series on the Venus prophecy. Venus is still front and center. You know, Venus and spades are kind of connected. Uh, you know, there's also a thing known as a, a Venus square. You know, I have no idea what the hell it accomplishes, but it's seven by a seven by seven grid of the numbers one through forty nine. But I just want to kind of touch on this stuff. Um, you know, signs that are coming up. May 11th, you know, Mercury aligns with the sun. And, uh, you know, I think there might be some kind of, like, uh, earthquake potential. I was looking at uh, AEJ777, Sister Anna, and about a year ago she did a video, 444. And uh, I put some comments on that, that video there. But it was most interesting that... Uh, coming up on July 18th and you know May 18th is coming up and May 19th and the stars in the sky for those two dates you know there's this alignment in Taurus with five planets uh, and of course there's the Mount Diablo Omgen race that you know maybe I'll be up there we'll have to see you know if God tells me to be there I'll be there but uh, it just seems like it's a marker for something man you know but July 18th uh, there's what is known as a grand water trine, where four planets form a triangle, and uh, three of them are at four degrees. So Saturn is at four degrees in Scorpio, Nep Neptune is at four degrees in Pisces, and Jupiter is at four degrees in Cancer, and Mars is at three degrees in Cancer. The Sun is at 25 degrees in Cancer, Mercury is at 13 degrees in uh, Cancer, and uh, the moon is at 19 degrees in Scorpio, and it's known as an aquatic triplicity. But uh, what most people will tell you is that that alignment ties into a prophecy from Nostradamus, from his uh, century number one, quadrant 50. And it's a prophecy on four. You know, it says that the, uh, the man whose holy day is Thursday shall come and uh, save the day. <laughs> and you know Thor in Norse Norse ugh, Thor in Norse mythology. You know, uh, he comes from Asgard traveling across the Rainbow Bridge. But in 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 their mythology, Thor fights the serpent, the Aurora Boris that encircles the world known as uh, Jormungandr. And uh, he fights the battle of Ragnarok at the end of the age. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like you know, where we're at. And that's why I was trying to tell you, you know, whether it's uh, Muslims in the Middle East, Nordic people, Hopi Indians, uh, Israelis, you know what? The end time prophecies continue to unfold right in front of our eyes, my friend, and the events. But uh, Thor, you know, Thursday, Thanksgiving, Comet Ison coming in October. You know, Thor is represented by the Roman god Jupiter. 
or, or by the planet Jupiter, and it's the Roman god Zeus. And once again, that alignment on May 18th, you know, Jupiter's at the top between the horns of Taurus, you know, with the four or five other planets, Sun, Moon, Venus, Mars, Mercury, underneath it. All of it, I feel, is a progression of prophetic events, my friends. But, you know what, the, those four degrees, four, four, and four, you know, I think it kind of matches up possibly with uh, AEJ 777's, uh, you know, prophecy. But they're all things to look for. All right, hey, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Uh, you know, all of us are unique, my friends. You know, one thing about ears is everybody's ears are unique. No two people have the same kind of ears, you know, just like our fingerprints. And I would tell you, probably just about everything on us is unique. And that's why each and every one of us, our walk with God is unique. And uh, what we should be careful of is, uh, you know, judging people and casting judgments like you're going to burn in hell. You know what? That's all God's domain. Let God handle that. You know, but there's a difference between calling a spade a spade and judging. You know, Jesus would say, you hypocrites. You know, that's calling a spade a spade because he was perceiving that the words out of their mouth were not matching the thoughts in their head or what they were, they were trying to portray themselves as one image, but they were another image. So he called a spade a spade. And that's where we are, my friends, the ace of spades. Jesus Christ himself is going to empower all of us. And you know what? I can do that. I could tell very quickly whether somebody's lying or not, you know, but, uh, you know, Jesus wouldn't even judge the devil when they were arguing over Moses' body. He, he, he said, let, let God, let the Lord rebuke you, you know. And that's where we should be, my friends, is you could, when you see somebody that is rubbing you the wrong way, you can call a spade a spade. You could say, hey, you know what, killing, that ain't right. Or, hey, you know, you're, 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 you're messing up, you know, you're hooked on drugs. You know, that's just calling a spade a spade. But you kind of stay away from being judgmental. Now, I know probably going to get a whole bunch of you out there that are on the judgment kick, you know, saying, I'm sent here to judge. Well, you know what? Hey, God bless you. That's going to be between you and God, man. But uh, in my heart, you know, off the tip of my tongue, a truth is that I don't walk around trying to be judgmental or judging of others. You know, almost every person I meet, whether I, I, I try and show them love and whether it's somebody that's, you know, reflecting it back to me or somebody that's walking around in darkness. It doesn't matter. I pray for God always to, you know, send the light, the truth, mercy, love, compassion, understanding, you know, his healing touch, all the good stuff into that person, you know, that I am I'm facing, you know, rather than uh, going negative and, you know, trying to tell them what a screw up they are and that they're going to, you know, uh, burn in hell. But, you know, there is a truth that... You know, the dark path, the shadows, if you're not walking with God, it's a path to destruction. That's a truth. That's calling a spade a spade. But it's not casting judgment. It's just letting them see the logic of their own errors, which is if you're walking this path, you're walking down to the destruction. If you're walking this path, the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ, hey, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be in peace and rest, and you're going to be walking and living in the kingdom, and you're going to have Jesus Christ on the throne of your heart. Now, if you haven't acknowledged Jesus Christ, but you're walking around with love in your heart, then you're so close. You're so close. You just need that last little veil, or you need that last little bit of earwax. You know, get a Q-tip out, clean your ears, man. You know, but come to the realization of who is the Lord and Master, because that's what's also in play, my friends. You know, Jesus Christ, 22. You know, <laughs> a hero comes, man. All right, hey, God bless everybody. This is Operation End Times. I'm Ben Hellstead, your Jedi warrior for Jesus. I'll be talking to you, man. You know, but uh, life is glorious. You know, here today in San Jose. You know, even though we got some clouds, the sun is shining. I'm gonna go walk my dogs. I'm going to go pray and meditate to God for a few. All right. Catch y'all later.